We'd like to take a couple moments to introduce you to the new 3D options that are available inside of KipWareM. Uh, this is a unique feature only available to KipWareM. Uh, we don't know any other conversational software that's out there that has the capability to do uh, these kinds of 3D shapes uh, using only a fill-in-the-blank form. So it's a really a groundbreaking feature for us uh, in KipWareM. Uh, if you have that option available in KipWareM, then the uh, button on the left uh, bottom of the screen, the 3D menu button, will become active. Uh, when you click this button you can switch between the 3D options and the standard shape uh, options. Right now we only have uh, three shapes available which are uh, cones, bosses, and troughs, uh, but we are looking to add more menu options. So if you have something, a common shape that you do quite frequently in your shop that you would uh, like to sync uh, that a lot of people would be doing, uh, we'd like to add that to uh, the option. So if you can drop us an email at sales at kentechinc.com, explain the shape, uh, and if we feel that it's a shape that uh, is common out, out there, uh, we'd love to add it to the software and, and uh, give you the capability to do that programming uh, using just a conversational fill-in-the-blank form. We'll take a look at some of these uh, shapes and give you some of the uh, options that are available. Uh, one of the really nice options that are available is the type of cutter. So you can use either a square end mill or a ball end mill to do the machining. Uh, one of the things that people uh, would normally do is use a square end mill uh, to rough the, rough the shape and uh, then come back with a ball end mill, a really small depth of cut uh, in order to finish the shape and get a nice finish. Uh, you do have the capability on each form to do roughing and finishing uh, in one, one form. Uh, unfortunately, you have to select which end mill you want to do. Uh, so if you did want a square uh, end mill to rough it and then a ball end mill to finish it, uh, you would need to create that cycle twice. Uh, once a roughing cycle and once a finishing cycle. Uh, the other thing available is uh, most most uh, shapes have the ability to do uh, clockwise or counterclockwise roughing and finishing. Uh, so you can select uh, one, so you could select clockwise roughing and counterclockwise finishing or whatever. Whatever option you want to do, uh, you can do that on the same form. On, also on the form you have the option to uh, define cutting parameters for both roughing and finishing. So uh, for instance here we have a roughing depth of cut, we have a finishing depth of cut, uh, we got a roughing feed rates and finishing feed rates. So you can, uh, even though you have to use the same type of end mill, uh, you can select those options to define uh, different parameters for both uh, roughing and finishing. In the OD cone we're assuming that this is just a round piece of stock or you know whatever you have available to uh, make a cone like this uh, you know maybe this uh, image on the screen uh, maybe you've got cones that are sticking up on, on your part uh, and you want to come in and you want to machine those uh, we, we assume that they're uh, just a straight round uh, piece uh, as a stock. In the tapered hole we assume that there is uh, some kind of a hole that goes through the part and we're asking uh, on the form we want to know uh, the diameter of the clearance hole. So the tapered cone is uh, assuming that there's a hole uh, through the part. But again, you have all those same options available. You, have, you can use a square or a ball end mill. Uh, you have clockwise and counterclockwise roughing and finishing along with the uh, separate roughing uh, and finishing parameters. In the tapered boss, again, we're assuming that this is uh, just a stock and that you want to take and rough out the stock uh, along the contour of the tapered boss. Again, all the same parameters are available here with uh, separate depths of cut uh, in the types of cutter and the types of finishing. In the tapered pocket menu, uh, we're assuming that you have a square or rectangular through uh, pocket already done. So uh, here we're asking for uh, the finish length at the bottom and the finish uh, width at the bottom. And that assumes that uh, that bottom part has already been uh, machined out uh, according to those dimensions. So uh, when the tool comes in and starts roughing, it's going to assume that there is an existing a square or rectangular uh, through a pocket already machined. And again, you can use the conversational side of KIPORM to first do that square or rectangular uh, through straight wall pocket, and then we'll come through and do the tapered. Uh, pretty much the same parameters are available uh, on this form as well. In the trough menu, we're assuming that this is just a piece of stock, that all of this is solid in here. 
and uh, one of the nice features is in here is that the, you can take a square end mill, uh, you can rough all this material out, uh, then you can take a ball end mill and automatically uh, finish it along the contour. Uh, and the only thing we allow is a square end mill to do the roughing, so uh, if you hit the ball end mill, uh, the roughing doesn't become available. Uh, you can only do roughing if you have a square end mill. A couple of nice uh, features in this particular menu is that uh, the software will automatically stop uh, when the uh, diameter of the end mill becomes too big for the trough. Uh, so before it gets to the bottom, uh, if you're using a square end mill to rough it, uh, it'll automatically abort uh, once the uh, diameter of the of the uh, end mill uh, becomes too small to machine any more of the bus. That's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice feature, pretty handy. You don't have to worry about overcutting uh, inside the bus. Another thing is we have a climb conventional finishing. So you can do uh, some climb and uh, either that or conventional finishing uh, with a ball end mill or the square end mill.